Okay, people, I'm still here. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is, people. I think it's December 27, 2017. I'm pretty sure it's the 27th. It's going on in the evening now. It's dark outside. So anyway, I'm sitting here working on the amendment for CIBC Bank. I've got the um, appeal paragraphs mostly written like I probably put it at oh probably 90 percent and I give myself another 10 percent at some point assuming that I don't run out of time <laughs> to go back into these acts and to pinpoint a few other things like for example I know for a fact I just don't know what what act it's in people I can't remember because I've read so many of them <laughs> But I know for a fact there's one or two acts anyway, one for sure. More than likely two because they cross-reference each other, right? Um, where it specifically says that uh, the care facility is not supposed to hand over the patients to strangers, basically, in a nutshell. And that's basically what Fraser Health did they handed John over to strangers because it John would not have been able to walk out of there by himself. Plain and simple, people. That's why he had us. Right? That's why he stuck around me all these years, people. Right? So, anyway, I, I'm hoping to find that because that directly falls under the duty of care. The duty of care is not to release the patient to strangers. Now, whether I find that or not, in between now and the next five, six days, because I lose two days, because the seventh falls on a Sunday, and I only have 30 days to put my application in for an appeal. So I lose two days, people. So I got to go out by Wednesday or Thursday in January the first week of January and file this stuff so what I'm doing is I'm working on the amendment for CIBC Bank because I want to get that done with too and being that when I did the first amendment I didn't touch the um oh I feel so much like crying people you just can't imagine um I didn't I didn't alter the legal basis or the relief sought because I don't know how to write them <laughs> any more than I knew how to write the statement of facts but in this case I am attempting to write the amendments through all three sections because I don't want I mean they're gonna do the same thing that Fraser Health is gonna do anyway right or what Fraser Health has been doing <coughs> but I don't want them <coughs> telling the court as the excuse to throw it out that, you know, I didn't completely amend it. So I'm now making the effort to completely amend it. Although as I'm amending it, I know I'm not amending it correctly in the terms of the legal basis for sure and the relief sought. And that's the point of this video is because right now where I'm at is I'm under the section of the Criminal Code of Canada and I th I think people why we have such a lawless society in terms of all this white criminal activity white collar criminal activity that goes on in our society as a general rule because it's prolific prolific <coughs> white collar criminal activity is prolific in today's society where the most vulnerable are the ones that are being preyed upon whether they're the elderly the children the homeless the poor I mean it's kind of standard I would think throughout history right you know just people like to crap on each other all the time right you know crabs in a barrel that's nothing new so anyway as I'm now doing this part here 
drawing my lines as if I was a teacher, you know, I'm like asking myself, why do, why does a lot of this stuff under the criminal code of Canada never get dealt with from a white collar criminal perspective? And a lot of people will tell you that that book is obsolete now in terms of our courts tend to favor case law, which I'm starting to understand are these court cases that lawyers inject into court cases to prove their point, which isn't necessarily effective, especially if it's being used as a smear campaign, as in my case. Or they rely on provincial laws and statutes and that type of stuff. Not so much criminal law, because criminal law comes from the police. But because the police don't involve themselves with the trafficking of elderly people on a political sense, <laughs> right? In terms of calling out the corruption within our union sector regardless of the ministry of where that corruption is coming from, because there's different ministries, right, in terms of the union sector that are employed by the provincial government. Um, you're not going to get too many charges under the Criminal Code of Canada because normally it's the police. So, like, the last time when the social workers came to my house with those two screws in the rail... And all of a sudden, my whole house was falling down, right, because of that. And it weren't for them to come and investigate the two screws in the rail. <laughs> Prior to that, you know, when, when, when the cops were here because of, you know, what the city was doing. And everybody was in panic mode. And, you know, my youngest daughter's brother came by and started hauling shit out to the, you know, to the alley and driveway and I'm like no don't do that you can't do that you know you got to stop doing that because if you don't stop doing that <coughs> for sure the city's going to charge my landlord all this money you know we just moved it over here and now you're moving it over there if you don't stop I'm calling the cops I ended up calling the cops to get them to stop <laughs> right you know I, I did I asked the cop I said you know what it, why does the city seem to have so much authority over telling people how to live their lives in terms of what they can do in their yards when it comes to building things or having toys or you know having building material in the yard to make things or anything <laughs> anything they don't want flat grass right so there's you know there's just it's a, it, it's just it's just an attack on 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 the yard to push out the tenants or to get the homeowner to go bankrupt and sell the house or whatever the motive is because it's more than just having flat grass people let's be honest about it okay um what do you call it i asked the cop i said why you know why is it that the city seems to have so much power compared to the police because you know when you look at it the police don't seem to have that much power compared to the city and he said, yeah, the city has more power than the police outside of the Criminal Code of Canada. That's what they deal with, is the Criminal Code of Canada. That's what the police deal with. But yet, the people who are committing white-collar criminal activity are not going to jail. If anything, our policing departments are enabling the activity to carry on based on that police protect money you know like they blew off uncle john oh well you know he just didn't love you after 23 years and you know he he left you on his own accord that's what he told basically my son you don't know you know and or, or social workers doing social workers jobs you know that's what the social worker does just send off people into the abyss and so that you never get to see your loved ones again because that's what social workers do and therefore, it's not the cop's responsibility to investigate because there were no crimes committed under the Criminal Code of Canada, in his opinion. And the only advice that he had to give my son at that time, when my son went to the care facility to get the employee ID numbers, 
<coughs> so that we could try and file a lawsuit <coughs> for the crimes that were committed within that facility. <coughs> the only advice that the cop gave <coughs> was to uh, <coughs> get a lawyer, knowing that there are no lawyers that are going to step up to the plate <coughs> to deal with this. Because it's a money train, people. You know, they already got themselves booked over here and booked over there and booked over there, right? They don't want to rock no boats. <coughs> Take on <coughs> human right issues, <coughs> right? <coughs> Especially if it's going to affect their paychecks or get the Bar Association pissed off at them, right? Because, you know, you're rocking boats and and disrupting the status quo. <coughs> so nothing changes. It's business as usual. <coughs> Unless, of course, <coughs> you find someone like me <coughs> that's just kind of going in blind on their on their instincts and <coughs> not afraid to, <coughs> you know, put it out there as I see it and as I discover it because I have to look for the right laws and the right codes and you know I have to try and put it together in my brain like I said there's one section in some of these acts I don't know which one it is <coughs> where it specifically says <coughs> John is not allowed to be released to strangers <coughs> and being that his immediate or sorry being that his extended family in Victoria spent no time with him outside of once a year for maybe 20 minutes at his mother's birthday party in passing <coughs> once a year <coughs> for a day that isn't that isn't uh, that's 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 less than an acquaintance that would be like me ending up like Uncle John I inherit all this money you know it gets out through the grapevine and then all of a sudden my long lost cousin starts showing up <clears throat> want to be family and <clears throat> take you know take me over and start accusing my kids of abusing me but they're the cousins and they're the ones that have the history with me and you know cut a deal with the social workers right pay off the cops <laughs> right or whatever pay off somebody <clears throat> to haul my ass out of there and steal my money after they drug me up make it so I lose my memory so I don't even remember that I have kids anymore people well my kids are going crazy trying to get me back right this is the stuff that's going on and it falls under the criminal code of Canada and because the criminal code of Canada is an obsolete book right where the cops are the only ones who can actually use that book to the extent of how and why that book was written most people don't even look at it. They don't even think that it, you know, they, 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 they in the back of their mind, <coughs> hold on a minute. Okay, it's just hot and dusty in here. My vents have never been cleaned in this house, people, since I've moved in. They, I don't even think they were clean when I moved in. Every now and then I take a vacuum and I try and stick a hose down there and do the best that I can, but it's just one of those things that my landlady won't fix, right, in terms of, like, if I want it done, I have to do it for myself. And because I don't have any extra, you know, any, you know, I'm on a bare bone budget here, right? I never get to do these things. And I don't, you know, we wanted to have the chimney done. That's not getting done. So anyway, besides that point, so I don't know what I was saying other than, <coughs> you know, cops, they use it for the street crime that they, you know, they chase the bad guy down the street which is usually the petty thieves, the petty the petty addicts, you know, the petty drug dealers, you know, nothing major. Like I said, it's nothing major, people. You hear of a major drug bust under the Substance Abuse Act, right, <coughs> or whatever, once every five years. That's it. You don't hear of anything, really. You hear of just them going after the poorest of the poor. And that's how they use the criminal code of Canada. But probably, you know, out of a pop, like out of a percentage of 100% in terms of who reads the criminal code of Canada, right? 
for 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 just you know general knowledge in in the event of something bad should happen to you <clears throat> most people don't like i'd probably put it at 99.9% .9 of the population does not read the criminal code of canada <coughs> or at least a good 95% don't read it <coughs> because it's an obsolete book <coughs> right <coughs> they'll go to the charter rights of you know freedom of charter rights and that type of thing of uh, you know freedom of whatever it is <coughs> oh, this is not working <coughs> before they'll go to the criminal code of Canada so because I'm getting sick people this is what's happening here I'm getting sick like <coughs> you don't know <coughs> I go to sleep <coughs> and I'm like I'm so sore in the morning and my ears are ringing and my, my jaw is like clackling and like, I probably have some sort of infection in my body and I just don't know it right or I probably do know it but as if I have time to go to the doctor and go get a blood test I and mean, if it has anything to do with my teeth well you know nothing's been done with that because like I said when they you know before they took Uncle John we had booked in for 2015 for everybody to get their teeth done <coughs> it's now going on 2018 so I've been living with this for three years. <coughs> it's just getting progressively worse. <coughs> so I really do think part of my problem is this, right? And I just don't have money for a specialist. Not that they can save those teeth anymore, anymore. Anyway, I don't think they can. I think they're going to have to be pulled. And then once they start pulling my teeth, people, my mouth is going to start caving in. So, I mean, who wants that, right? So I just cope with it, right, for now, anyway. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, again, I'm under the legal basis of, you know, this section where it comes to, you know, this amendment. And, like, I'm not, I'm not removing people. I'm not removing these sections under the criminal code. What I'm doing is, I'm doing it this way. I'll show you. Just hold on. Do you see how I'm doing this? Now, of course, I know I'm not doing this right. Right? And if you notice, I put down here section 85.1 A and B. <coughs> Use, using firearm in commission of an offense. Anyway, you can see what's going on here, right? Let me put it back on me for a minute. <coughs> right? Okay? <coughs> you can see that I'm using firearm in the commission of an offense now nobody directly pulled out a gun at us as a family to keep us away from Uncle John but the Yale Road Center did call the police on my son <coughs> which is a form of intimidation by firearm because they walk in with guns on in on their hips right and if it would have went bad, my son could have got shot right there in the fucking care facility and died. It happens to people all the time, right? Throughout the whole continent. Really bad in the United States. <coughs> right? <coughs> it's that simple. <clears throat> as soon as you involve the police, you're using a firearm in the commission of, in this case, I'm calling it for what it is. They medically kidnapped Uncle John and then when we tried to call him on it they called in the police to intimidate us with guns so that we would back off with a possibility of somebody getting injured from those guns because nobody really knows how it's all gonna pan out once the cops show up also they use that same tactic when my two kids, Marcane and Shimei, went to Victoria, to the Victoria General Hospital on April 2nd of 2013. Sorry, April 2nd, 2015. Hoping that they would be able to see Uncle John, because they weren't too sure whether he was there or not. And they hadn't even been there for 30 minutes after they found him. 
and his sister came in with her code white, code white response, guidelines for code white response, raise their voice, please, please, please don't, don't, no, please, 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 code white, code white, call security, please, had to be the drama queen that she is, because she's had lots of practice at it, people, call security, call in the guns, call in the guns, are you hearing what I'm saying, people? So I have a right to put this down. Because this is what CIBC Bank and Fraser Health Authority facilitated through their negligence. Because they're assuming that nobody does read the Criminal Code of Canada. And since our provincial laws are ineffective in terms of, well... We, you can't do anything because, you, you know, you, we're not responsible to you under the duty of care. We're just responsible to the old man that we released out into the streets with no ID, with his pants falling down to his fucking knees, as he was walking out the door even though we damn well know that he couldn't fucking walk. <laughs> or we gave him to a stranger... Basically, just because she crawled out of some hole years later, and being that we can play you for a fool because you're poor, you know, more than likely illiterate, right? You know, you're stressed out because we can harass you and stalk you and, you know, and terrorize you and fucking accuse you of this and accuse you of that and call the cops on you. Are you hearing me, people? So this is why I'm putting down the Criminal Code of Canada. Even though some people seem to think it's an obsolete book, it is not. It is not an obsolete book, people is there for a reason. If the cops can use it, so can the people. How about that? If cops can use that, that's what they that's how they operate under the Criminal Code of Canada. Well, then it's a legitimate book. Right? It's a legitimate book. So it's important that I put these down and remind these corporations that they have criminal white collar criminal activity going on within their employee sector and they need to clean up their freaking acts how about that and bring uncle john back home we want uncle john back home oh yeah and i forgot about this part here this is important under the criminal code of canada it is uh through the kidnapping trafficking and persons hostage taking and abduction offenses against persons all the way down to the end of the page. It's actually 2792. I've got the one and whatever up in here. But everyone who, without lawful authority, confines, imprisons, or forcibly seizes another person is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term of not exceeding 10 years. Non-resistance, this is important people, in proceeding under this section, the fact that a person in relation to whom the offense is alleged to have been committed did not resist is not a defense unless the accused proves that the failure to resist was not caused by threats duress, force, or exhibition, or force. Both of those corporations have to prove that. That's the difference between the Criminal Code of Canada and a provincial law, I think. There's more onus on the... Um, defendant to have to prove that they didn't do that versus just saying we didn't do that and that's why I'm writing it down because when a man is drugged up 
and kept drugged up as he's being gaslighted, harassed, tortured, right? Mentally and emotionally abused. And then put to sleep so he can be stuffed on some freaking hammock and then transported across the ferry and then rushed to the emergency when he wakes up and realize what the hell happened to him. Right? They can't say that that's what he wanted, people. Especially when they released him with strangers. They released him to strangers. Right? Under their mandate, they released him to a stranger, basically. A hag of a stranger. With her hag bags. Seriously, people, I really do believe they took him out of there in a hammock. I wish I would have had the nerve to go look. I should have, but I had Andre with me, people. I couldn't be a drama queen. Right. Because if he would have been in that hammock and I seen that, oh, I don't know what would have happened. It would have been a whole lot of screeching, that's for sure. <laughs> right? But, uh... I do believe that's how they hauled his ass out of there. All sleepy, doped up in that hammock. Put him in their little minivan. All right? That's why they had to rush into emergency. And for some strange reason, Fraser Help doesn't seem doesn't feel like it's obligated to that. He's not responsible for that. Because they simply released him. Right? None of their business. hostage taking withholding or destroying documents material benefit extortion robbery forcible confinement kidnapping non-resistance duty of persons to provide the necessities duty of person undertaking acts dangerous to life Duty of persons undertaking acts dangerous to life. Duty of persons directing work. Criminal negligence. Causing bodily harm by criminal, criminal negligence. You're not going to find those kind of laws, people, in these provincial acts. And if you are, they're very, 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 very watered down. Traps likely to cause bodily harm. But of course, we've got <clears throat> withholding or destroying documents. And they were already doing that with the bank. They were doing that with uh, mail fraud. Right? They weren't giving John and and myself his medical files upon the request of John and myself so they were withholding they were destroying so if they were doing that then you know that they've continued to do that people <laughs> here's another one you're not gonna find this in their rules and regulations okay I don't know where you would find Defamatory libel offenses against persons. Uh, section 2981 under, under the criminal code definition. A defamatory libel is a matter published without lawful jurisdiction or exercise that is like to in, likely to injure 
the reputation of any person by exposing him to hatred, contempt, or ridicule, or is designed to insult the person of or concerning whom is published. Can we say GMOI people? That sprang up real fast after Uncle John disappeared now, didn't it? They opened up the account in July, and John disappeared in freaking January, right? Because, uh, well, February, because they were they were getting ready. They were get, they were they were they were getting ready to spring on something because they were holding on something, right? Mode of expression: a defamatory libel may be expressed directly by insinuations or irony. Well, I think phoning up banks and you know saying that you know John was blah 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 and and that you know or I was abusing him you know CIBC bank called up the bank and said I was abusing John with the social workers running up and down the freaking halls there accusing me of abusing John I would definitely say that's a defamatory of libel right punishment of libel known to be false well, that's why it's going to court. So we're going to clarify that, people. Right? I'm not going to have that freaking Duncan Cloud hanging over my head for the umpteen years while they spit on John's grave. I can tell you that right now. That ain't going to happen. Or any healthcare worker or bank employee. Right? Like I said, every time I went to the bank after Uncle John went missing within that first weird, first year asking for, you know, information in regards to who this other person was that was supposedly be in dispute with me in terms of power of attorney, but they wouldn't give me anything freaking official to confirm what they were saying other than you're being accused of elderly abuse, so therefore we can't tell you nothing. Go get a lawyer. Until eventually I came across that one good bank manager who gave me what I needed and also told me what the hell was really going on in terms of John's credit card just up and disappearing within um, six months of him being forcibly taken. Here's another one. That you, quiet, that you're not going to find in these provincial laws, people. 319.1, public incitement of hatred. Everyone who, by communicating statements in any public place, incites hatred against any identifiable group where such incitement is likely to lead to a breach of peace is guilty of an indictable offense that is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years. Willful, willful, willful promotion of hatred, two. And there's also a B, an offense punishable on summary conviction. Everyone who, this is willful promotion of hatred. Okay, because this is what these people did. People, they, they in public place, incited hatred towards myself and my family, right, to breach the peace, right, again, my son had the police called on him, right, because, you know, they didn't want to be responsible to what they did, my kids had the, the security called on them in a public hospital, right, as Eleanor's, like, Please, please, call security, please. To make it sound like she's being attacked or something stupid like that. Please. To cut off the kids in mid-conversation with Uncle John. That's public incitement of hatred, people. Same thing with those social workers, you know, inciting hatred towards my teenage daughters as they were coming into that care facility to see Uncle John, right, with their co-workers because they were on a mission to whisk John out 
of that place by any means necessary? Willful promotion of hatred, everyone who, by communicating statements other than in private conversation, willfully promotes hatred against any identifiable, uh, uh, identifiable group is guilty of. And then it goes on to say, no, this is number three out of that one section there. No person shall be convicted of an offense under subsection 2A if he establishes that the statement communicated were true, if the statements were relevant to any subject of public interest, the discussion of which was for the public benefit. Is it? Does it make it a public benefit to accuse me of elderly abuse people? So that when I go out and I try and work on my nonprofit, I look like a criminal, basically, uh, in the eyes of the banking system, you know, in the eyes of the healthcare system, being that my files have been flagged in both corporations, just by the very nature of the way I be treated when I go into those institutions. If on reasonable grounds he believed them to be true, well, they know that it's not true, people, because the agenda was something else. It was never about health care for Uncle John. It was always about something else. If in good faith he intended to point out for the purpose of removal matters producing or intending to produce feelings of hatred towards an identified, uh, identifiable group in Canada. Well, when you're attacking a whole family, in essence, that's what these people have done. That's why I, I, I drew on that as well as genocide, because it puts a form of genocide onto the family. Because, you know, with the gang stalking and, you know, the flagging of files and just the whole nine yards, people, just the whole nine yards. But these types of things you're not going to find in our provincial laws. And most people, like I said, do not read the Criminal Code of Canada. And therefore, because of that, that's why this kind of stuff goes on. Because nobody challenges it. That's why, people, nobody challenges it. That's why we have 10,000 people that are being illegally detained within some sort of health care institution against their will in the province of British Columbia, Canada. With old people disappearing and trying to run away from the health care system just so that they don't get shock therapy as they're telling people that I want to be with this family not that family just like Uncle John told those social workers he wanted to be with us this family not those people that he disappeared to somewhere along the way <laughs> Somewhere. He's somewhere, people. I don't know where he is, but he's somewhere. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to end it on this one here. I'm still working on this. I still have a long way to go. Because you have to remember, people, what I did is I typed it out. You see? That, that's, that's, that's what I did. I took each, each section and then I typed it out. I was trying to make it easy for the judge to read so that he didn't have to keep going to the book. That's what I was thinking at the time. But whatever. Make it easy on myself too, right? But besides that point, um, so I listed down breaking and entering rights of property. 348.1. Breaking and entering with intent, committing offense, or breaking out. And it says here under E, there's A, a, a breaks and enters a place with intent to commit an indictable offense. Therein, B, breaks and enters a place and commits an indictable offense. Therein, or E is guilty. E, if the offense is committed in relation to a place other than a dwelling house of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years or of an offense punishable on summary conviction. 
They broke into his bank account, people. Okay? That's what they did. That is why I listed that down. You're only, only going to find that, people, under the Criminal Code of Canada. You are not going to find that anywhere in all these acts, regulations, rules, because all those acts and regulations give permission for people to take over people's assets. There's nothing in there that protects the people from other people from going in and, you know, hooking up with the public guardian and trustee because, you know, somebody doesn't like so-and-so, so they go and they file a report and they make an application to form a committee and, you know, in the meantime, you know, they're, they're you know, being all buddy-buddy with the, with the workers in the care facility and, you know, saying, yeah, yeah, no, just give them some more drugs, you know, just keep them quiet and, you know, let this all pan itself out and it won't be long before we get his money. And he won't even know what hit him, people. They don't talk about it as if, as if it's being theft. No, they talk about it as if it's being protecting the old people. Right? Once they get old, they're not allowed to live in their houses anymore. So they have to go somewhere. Right? They're not allowed to manage their own affairs anymore. So somebody has to take over their assets. They're not allowed to be with their loved ones anymore. So they're removed from their family members, right? The ones that they love. They're not allowed to see them anymore. That's, that's happening to lots and lots of people, people. So anyway, I'm not afraid to say it, people. John's bank account was robbed. And one last thing. For anyone to sit up there and say that I'm being vindictive or vexatious or whatever the hell it is that they want to accuse me of on top of everything else that they accuse me of trust me people I've got better things in my life to do than to be sitting here doing this okay I don't get to sew I don't get to work on the nonprofit everything that does with the trademark name is going down the freaking tubes because I don't get no time to spend no time with it not only that but I've been slandered in the public I, right? Unless, of course, I wanted to, uh, you know, keep their dirty secret to myself and just act like Uncle John never existed and told my kids to never mention his name again in all the years that they're, you know, left to live on this planet. Like, that's bullshit, people. Total bloody bullshit. So, um, you know, like, again, I'm not doing this for the simple fact is it brings me pleasure because it does not bring me pleasure people there's nothing pleasurable about this okay it's grueling it's hard work right it it, it you know it, it puts me at risk to be targeted even more right but then on the other hand if you don't stand up to tyranny within your union sector your government union sector the stuff that's going on within these laws that is making it so that people just can come in and ruin your life time after time after time so they can prop up their middle class lifestyles or in some cases rich lifestyles depending on how much they can get from somebody else right it's just it's not gonna it's nothing will ever get better it'll just get worse that's all. That's all. It's going to get worse because this Criminal Code of Canada, like I said, is nearly an obsolete book because even the police don't use it. Really, the police should be doing this. This is what the police should be doing. Right? And in my notice of claim, I've got it there. I've asked for this to go into, in, into a court for criminal charges. I want criminal charges on somebody within this network of colluded group of criminal white collar criminal uh individuals that do this stuff on a regular basis to go to jail seriously and people whatever you do don't think that this stuff like is like in terms of workers healthcare workers and that type of thing <clears throat> not trying to injure their patients 
There was a nurse up in, um, what do you call it? <coughs> Ontario killed something like nine old people, nine or 12 old people. She murdered them. And uh, eventually they caught her. So it happens. And also, too, like like I said, with, with Joan, you know, they shut off her IV. When she went into the care facility, people, she went in December of 2012. The doctor told her that she was going to be dead by 2013. And sure enough, by the 14th of December 2013, she was dead. And do you want to know why she died? Because they shut off her IV. They let her just shrivel up and dry up and die. Right? I didn't figure it out until it was too late. Because the IV, the water in the IV, nothing moved. Right? I'd take John, go see Joan, whatever, and come back. You know, the, the last week of her life, right? You know, and a few days later, I'm like... It just kind of dawned on me, and she was like begging for water, and... She was on her last legs, and like I do, I honestly think that they just shut off the IV and just stopped giving her fluids and basically killed her. Because the minute she died, right, John was with her the night that she died. He wasn't with her when she died. He was with her an hour or two or whatever it was because we were there late. I was, believe it or not, people, as he was holding Joan's hand, I was in the common area sitting at their kitchen tables working on my non-profit books. Can you believe that? I had them all spread out on the table working on my uh on my uh bank statements and just doing the, you know, doing year-end whatever. Well, John was visiting Joan. That's what I did. I'd let him go and I'd set up my paper. I'd sit there for hours eating crackers but yeah no they, they they cut off her water and then when she died they called us up the next day and demanded that we go in there and take out all her stuff the only thing is we were going back and forth back and forth back and forth and we didn't we didn't have money you know right like the gas tank was almost like it was empty it was pretty much empty because we were going back and forth. I was taking him back and forth, right? So, anyway, it is, it's just stupid, people. Stupid. Just remember, these provincial laws that we have, they're, uh, they're nothing like the federal laws. Okay, I'm going to end it on this little note here, people. <laughs> Whatever. This is Section 390 under the Criminal Code of Canada. Fraudulent receipts under Bank Act. Okay? Everyone is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years who willfully, after giving to another person or obtaining an endorsing or assigning to another person, any receipt, certificate, or acknowledgement for anything that may be used for the purpose mentioned in the Bank Act mm, without the consent in writing of the holder or endorsed or the production and delivery of a receipt, certificate, or acknowledgement alienates or parts with or does not deliver to the holder or owner the property mentioned in the receipt, certificate, or acknowledgement. In other words, people, if Uncle John inherited money that he wasn't told about for 13 months and then along came the loving sister and medically kidnapped him so that she could rush to the bank and say, Oh, look what I have. Look what I have. Um, let's take care of his business matters, but before that happens, lock that bitch out over there, right? And, you know, because she's been abusing John for the last 35 years of his life, 
and we got to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore. So, you know, here, I'm his power of attorney now. Uh, I made sure of that. Don't you worry. And, you know, she she's not going anywhere in life because nobody likes her now because, you know, she's been dubbed an elderly abuser, right? And, you know, her family's falling apart. And when it's not falling apart, you know, don't worry. I've got my little crew on the side stalking her and stalking her family so that the family falls apart so that, you know, we can do good business with each other. And, you know, don't worry about John. I've got John under control. You know, he's nice and comfy in his diaper. He'll let me do anything that I want. I don't have to ask John, right? Because it doesn't matter what John wants, right? It's not about John anymore. It's about this, this cash load that we got, right? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put it over here and, you know, to make myself look good, uh, we'll pay off his credit card and, you know, we'll set up this little RSP savings account so that, you know, if and when the shit should ever hit the fucking fan, I can say, oh, what a responsible person I've been compared to her. I mean, what has she accomplished? Well, let me tell you something. What I accomplished was I looked after his wife for five years, four of those years in my house, okay? And the woman had a history of going in and out of mental institutions for a very, very long time. And she had severe medical health issues along with mental health issues. But it doesn't matter, you know, Uncle John wanted to, you know, make her happy before her days were over. And so, you know, we took her under the wing and she became Auntie Joan. And, you know, we were, we, we went through, through thick and thin, just like I looked after John, Uncle John through thick and thin, where none of these people were ever to be found. Ever to be found, people. Why do you think he brought me back from Alberta back in 1990? I was gone for like two years, over two years, people. I was gone for like 28 months or something like that. And he pleaded for me to come back to Victoria because he was being abandoned by his loving family. They left him to wallow in a filthy apartment that nothing moved except the dust in that thing for 25 years as his adopted daughter abused him by ignoring him and mistreating him and not helping him with nothing whereas Joan refused to even wipe down the counter never mind vacuum and it just got too hard for John and none of those people, his loving extended family, wanted to go in there and freaking help him. Right? So he asked me to come to, back to Victoria. So I came back to Victoria to help him. And I grew up in Victoria. So, like I said, I was sitting in Alberta in a snowbank. And, you know, he offered to bring me back. And so I went back. But that's, 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 that's the truth of the matter, people. So for all this hoopla... How she rescued John, paid off his bills. Yeah, I'd like to know how the hell she paid off his bills. Because whatever she did, he's not aware of it, people. She made sure of that. Because if he was aware of it, he'd be with us. Aware of his family. The ones that he helped to raise, the children. Right? But this... Black Widow didn't want him to be happy. And the bank facilitated that misery upon him, upon his grandchildren, upon his great-grandchildren, and upon myself. So that's why this is in the Notice of Claim against two corporations.